What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome back to my rise to fame. So here we are, FC Lati, the start of our new season and we have a cup final today. Yes, we have a chance to win our first bit of silverware for the first time since our first season where we won the league title with Home United. So that is in a bit, but first we have a few things to go through. So on the right you'll see my history summary. There's a new name there and it is Tonga and... It means we've entered the international management side of things. So I'm going to go through that first. So why did I go for Tonga in 2019 now? I almost said 2018, but 2019. Why did I choose to go with them? And the reason I did what I did was because I, I, I've seen Tonga in the past available and I saw them again and I was like, all right, I want to break into the international side of things. I'd like to try and... Um, wait, it... Can I ask to go? Oh, it'd be club management I'd ask to go on that. Anyway, I was just checking. Yeah, but yeah, I wanted to go on the international side of things for a while. And a few national teams have become available. But I, weren't, I wasn't particularly sure if I could get them. You know, I didn't want to apply for a job and be turned down. I just wanted to make sure I could get a job. And um, with Esli Lati going very well, you know, last season finishing where we did. And... Um, I feel that we can really push on this year and you know being in a cup final as we are right now is actually a really good sign but yeah I, I was like yeah I'm ready to go into it and I saw Tonga there and you know they they are currently the lowest ranked team in the world so out of all the possible ranked teams because some teams or some national teams sorry um, are not actually registered according to FIFA. You know, people like Gibraltar, people like Crimea, a few African, uh, not African, I think actually all the African teams are. I'm not sure, there may be a few African teams, but there are some North American, you know, Oceania nation, things like that. There are a few nations that aren't actually registered with FIFA. Tonga are the lowest ranked out of that. They're ranked 209th in the world. And um, that may be quite strange then that I decide to go from them. But I feel they have a, a tournament coming up, which is winnable. So if we go back all the way to 2015, this is the last time they actually entered the tournament. Now, in that tournament, uh, in the, uh, from the two tournaments, one of them was called the OFC Nations Cup. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, that is sort of the Oceania's version of the European Championships. More times than not, New Zealand have, will win it. Ever since Australia left um, this, uh, this co uh, continent and went to Asia, it's been most likely dominated by... Uh, more often than not, I should say, dominated by New Zealand, Tahiti, golling it once, uh, winning it once in 2012. And of course, they did that Confederations Cup thing where they got battered every time, but got a standing ovation from the crowd. Uh, despite their you know, best efforts, they couldn't help it. But yeah, you know, it's uh, dominated by New Zealand. But I feel we don't have a chance in this tournament. You know, that's, still, and that's not the tournament I'm worried about. It's the Pacific Games. I think we have a chance in this. Now, there are some pretty good nations in it. As you can see, the past three winners have all been from uh, have all been the same nation. New Caledonia, uh, Fiji have won it a few times. Tahiti as well. If we go into its actual full history um, and go into past winners, you see that you know it's been won by pretty much the same three teams. The same three teams have been first or second. Solomon Islands have been up there a bit as well. But I think this is a competition that is winnable. I think it is winnable. I mean, obviously, it's going to be very hard to try and win it. But last time the team entered the tournament, they won one game out of possible three in the groups and ended up being knocked out in the quarterfinals by the um, eventual winners. So that's obviously not an effort they can be bad about. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay and compete in both of these tournaments, which start this year in 2019, and hopefully we can get a result. As you can see, I've played in some matches recently. I've been in charge for two. And uh, in the first one, we drew 2-2 at home. Uh, we didn't uh, have the best of games. We came back, or we we came up from behind originally, originally, and um, then uh, they equalised back. But it was a pretty evenly fought match, and we we had some encouraging signs. Didn't look particularly great defensively, but we also looked decent at times. And then against Tahiti, we actually lost three two. Now that may be surprised that I'm I'm like quite optimistic, quite happy with that result. But again, we put in a performance that wasn't too bad. You know, again, defensively, we weren't particularly strong. Maybe I need to cover that up a little bit. I'm currently playing 4-4-2. Maybe I need to look to a more, uh, maybe a different setup. That's something I can still, um, well, actually, the next time we come back might actually be tournament time. So I still have a little bit of time anyway. I might have a game or two where I can fiddle around with things. So, you know, we'll have to see how things go. But I'm overall excited. You know, Tahiti are going to be one of the toughest teams in that Pacific Games. If not, it's going to be New Caledonia, who are a... Um, team we were going to be playing in June, but like I said, I think the tournament is going to occur maybe, actually no, it looks like the tournament occurs after that time, so we could even have them friendlies beforehand. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what we can do here. I'm only staying for these tournaments, I'll only be here till the, the 
after the tournament, so around July 2019. Then I'll be leaving. It'll just be my short spell, my short little venture into international management. And like I said, um, I, I mean, I'm enjoying my time at Lati, and I felt like going into Tonga and seeing what I could do there. Like I say, I will. It's only a short term thing anyway, so it's not like. Uh, it's not like I've got a massive plan. It's not like I've got a lot of pressure on me either. It's all just a chillax, relax sort of thing that I can do. So that's Tonga. Now back to Lattes. Let's go into the transfers and have a look at how we, how what's happened, what's occurred. So uh, I can't remember because I can't remember where you last saw me. I mean, as like who what transfers you know about. So I'm just going to run through them all. So first guy, Bukard came in. Stanley Bukard, a centre midfielder, pretty good centre mid. Uh, he came in as a, a sort of third choice centre mid. That's what I think best describes him. He's the third choice centre mid. So, for, of course, we play the three across the middle. And uh, what this guy offers, Bukhard, he offers a backup to the more ball winning midfielder guy, the guy that plays in the centre, the guy that is the more defensive of the three midfielders. He offers backup for that situation. So, that's who why, why he's been brought in. Samuel Bastian, he was brought in as a right midfield backup, sort of rotation option. Got a little potential on him. Uh, but he's mainly there for cover, £400 a week, which is a very cheap wage for us. So that was one of the reasons I decided to bring him in. Next guy, Yesen uh, Tuminan, I believe it's pronounced. Right midfielder, he should be a recognisable name. It's because he was actually released from the club this summer, as we can see there. There you go, he's released. And then nine days later, he was re-signed on. And the reason for that is because re -lo uh, looking at the market again, re-judging things, I was like, yeah, we could, we could use re-signing you. Um, and plus, his wage demands, I believe, had creep, crept down since last time. So, yeah, I was like, yep, yeah, you know, I'll accept you for that wage. Bruno Wilson was brought in, a centre-back from Portugal. Used to play for Sporting Lisbon's youth. Actually played a few times for Sporting Lisbon. Uh, but nothing great about this guy. Again, he's back up. It wasn't, this year, wasn't really about improving the squad as it was last year. And, you know, the emphasis last year was buying all these great players. This year, it was more about just add a few more players here or there. Create the depth that we need to, or may need to get us through the season. And then, you know, because the players already here should be good enough. Next guy, Kasim Abdullah. He's actually one of the only people in the starting 11, or from the signing, sorry, who actually influenced the starting 11. He's actually been playing for us so far this season. He's a right back. He's coming in to replace Connor McLaughlin. McLaughlin will now become sort of the backup guy, the bench fullback. And so far this season, he's done really well in the games that he's played in. As you see, if we go into the Cups, he's actually played really well. Got a goal as well. Got a yellow card. And overall, I'm pretty happy with this guy. I think he's a pretty good fullback. Uh, of course, we do play wingback, so... But, you know, he's a, he's a pretty good player, and I'm happy with Abdullah. And the last guy is another re-signing, as you see, Ronald. Um, that's not him. Uh, Yura Karrison was released on the 30th, and again, he was re-signed 16 days later. Again, I just felt we could use a backup. His wage was pretty cheap in comparison to other people around his level. And, you know, being from Finland as well, it's just a nice thing to sort of re-sign him back. So, yeah, he's returning to the club for another spell. And so far in his substitute appearances, he's not done too bad. I mean, not done great, but not done too bad either. So those are the ins, of course, from the outs. You can just see, you know, we've got a lot of people. Gala left. Gala left, I believe it's pronounced, actually. But Gala left. Released a lot of people onto the free transfers. People I decided we no longer needed. Also released Richard Jensen. He just wanted to out of the club. He did. He really didn't want to stay here much longer. Uh, no one was interested in him. So in the end, I just decided we release him. And also we release another player. I can't actually remember him. <laughs> off the top of my head, so that's quite poor. But yeah, you know, it's it, transfers have not been too busy, not been, of course, as busy as we were last year, because last year, pretty much every one of them names there were straight away shoved into the first team. So, of course, there was that disjointed first sort of third of the season where we didn't do as well as we did in the second two-thirds. But this year, it's all been about, as I've said, squad depth. And as a result, I think it's reflected on the results that we've had. So, in the friendlies, we played these, just sort of, again, build up fitness, not really important. But, in terms of how the Liga Cup did, or I think it's Liga, La Liga, La League, Liga Cup, I believe it is Liga Cup. I'm going to say it like that. Liga Cup, how we did in that. We started off with a 3-0 win against NYPA. Now, this was a good game because, of course, NYPA finished second last year, which meant it was sort of the battles of the almost teams from last season in the league. And we actually performed incredibly well. 3-0 victory, Stockton got two and Ammo got one in a performance at the front three played, their, played out of their skins. And the defence was solid as well. And overall, it was just a really good game to start ourselves off. Then we went to HJK, our local rivals, and beat them 4-0 away from home. They got a man sent off in the 16th minute, which also earned us a penalty. So it helped us on our way to winning the game. We then ended up going on to win the game 4-0 with Mattia Gallon getting four goals 
in uh, in the space of around what's that uh, 24 minutes in game time of course there was a half time separating that but still really good performance from him Mattia Gallon was really good in this match but it was just great to embarrass our rivals nothing better than beating your rivals especially at their own ground after that we played Hocker beat them 3-1 this was a game I expected to win and it was nice just to get that you know, get that result Stockton getting two there Following that, NYPA held us to a nil-nil draw the first time we'd not scored, but still a very dominant performance. This time, though, not as good going forward with the ball. Front players not playing as well. Hocker then were also performing. Um, we then played Hocker again, sorry, and we beat them 2-0. Again, another good performance from us, another good result. In the end, it was Borthwick Jackson with a 22nd minute goal and a known goal helping us on our way for the win. Again, not particularly great going forward. Stockton this time having a poor game. Um, you can be singled out, really, for having a bad game. And for the last game of the um, of Group Two, we lost one 0 to HJK at home. Got a smidge bit of def um, a smidge bit of revenge for, of course, the vi defeat we inflicted on them earlier on in this tournament. But still, you know, nowhere near the level we beat them, and still not, not a bad performance. If we'd have had a little bit more going forward again for these past three games, not really offering too much going forward. But if we had, you know, a little bit more aggression with our play, maybe we could have. Got more out of it. But still, we were already through at that point. So, it was a nothing game. And it meant we went through to the quarterfinals. So, in the quarterfinals, we won on penalties. In a game where, again, we were very dominant. But just struggled to find the back of the net. They scored in the 45th minute just before halftime. Which meant the pressure was now on us. Then, we continued to apply pressure. We continued to go for, go for the game as, you know, pushing and pushing and pushing. And in the 80th minute, Cameron Borthwick-Jackson stepped up from a corner, headed the ball at the near post and found the back of the net. As you can see, it's a bit of a telltale match, a telltale sign that their keeper got man of the match. Sort of just says how we continue to throw a lot at them, but nothing was really able to stick. And it ended up going all the way to penalties. They missed their first penalty with our keeper, saving it. And then the rest of our kick takers, Amo, Amo McLaughlin, Allen, Twozik and Borthwick Jackson scoring the winner. So as you see, Borthwick Jackson got us the equaliser in the 80th minute and then ended up getting the winning penalty as well. So it was a good day for him. Then we went to FC Hacker away from home in the Liga Cup semi-final. And again, it was, it was decided by penalties. This time they took a 2-0 lead FC Hacker. And it was again about us coming back from behind, but this time from a two-goal deficit. But we got one back before half-time with Abdullah scoring in the 34th minute, which meant we gave ourselves pretty much a full 40 high, 45 minutes and more to get ourselves the equaliser. And it took until the 66th minute for Jair Carrison to score the equalising goal. And again, not particularly great performance going forward. Gallon and Stockton both pulling in performances that left a lot to desire and really didn't show off their their ability. And then at the end of the game, again, it went to uh, it went to penalties. And this time it went all the way to sudden death until they missed their first penalty. Our kick takers, I can't see all of them here, but I believe it was Amo, Allen, Abdullah, Bukat, Arthur, uh, Arthur Worthy. And I'm trying to think, who was the last kick taker? I can't remember. Um, I honest to God can't remember who the last kick taker was. That's really bad. Uh, what is it? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I I don't remember. I can't remember. I'm just, I kind of I'm trying to think, but I, I thought maybe seeing the names would help. But they can't. But either way, our cup um our cup final today is against Jaro, so we are considered the favourites. And based upon our past meetings, when I've been in charge here, which were last season, of course. Uh, we won 4 0, drew 1 1, and won 3 0. So I've, I obviously have a very good record against Jaro. And hopefully, today, in the final, in. Um, where is it again? It's. I can't, God. In. Where are you? Helsinki. There you go. I couldn't think of the capital. Or well, not the capital, whatever. The, like, it's the capital, isn't it? Finland? Whatever. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I couldn't think of the name. But yeah, here in Helsinki, hopefully, we'll get a win today in the big final. So. Let's go forward into the starting lineup. So Abdullah is currently with International. So Colin McGoughlin will be starting the game today. And also you'll be on the bench. Uh, Bukhard was injured in the previous match. And also uh, Leborg. Or Le, yeah, Leborg. Leborgen. He was also injured in the um, in one of the previous games. So as a result, it will mean uh, Swadlis will come in. And Bukhard obviously can't start in the match. Uh, we don't really have another player. So I'm going to put Bruno Wilson on the bench and William um, Lindquist-Visk or whatever. <laughs> he can be as the backup sort of player in that defensive midfield role or the more defensive of the midfield roles. So let's run through this team. So Moisander in goal, McLaughlin, Arthworthy, 
Arthur Worry, sorry, Borthwick Jackson and Taylor in defence. In the midfield, we have Tish Bola, Twazis, how <laughs> can I say the guy's name, and Allen. Uh, right midfield, we have Ammo. Left midfield, or left hacker midfield, we have Gallon. And up front, we have Stockton. And something that just clicked on me, something I just, you know, moment of realisation. This is the first live com you're getting in a very long time. You may, may be wondering why that is. It's because I, I've, I've decided, because <laughs> those of you who don't know, these are all pre-recorded. Uh, look, way in advance pre recorded and I actually haven't recorded any of the past episodes up till the mid-season review with Wuhan. So, <laughs> I haven't recorded any of that up to this point, so that's quite weird, but I, I felt, you know, it's really important. That's why there's been no live comms in a long time, but, but I felt it was important that we can get any cup final or any important game on camera, therefore a live comm today, and also first recording in this save for a long time. So let's go into this. Let's see what we can do. The strikers, Stockton not playing particularly well recently. Hopefully today, in a final, he'll step up and be counted. Uh, according to the press, FC Lati have enough to edge the game. It'll be tough. Jaro won't roll out. Uh, won't roll out, but with whatever that guy's name is, get my vote. I think that's the manager's name, isn't it? Oh no, that's our nickname. <laughs> I couldn't. I didn't even know that. That's quite poor. Uh, they'll get their vote. Jaro's task will not be made easier by the absence of, and they've listed three players there, but... Let's go. If Stockton scores two or more goals in this game, he actually finishes top goal scorer in the tournament. He'll have to score, I think, three goals, actually, uh, to be top goal scorer in the tournament. But they also have a guy that scored four goals, so clearly anyone can win top goal scorer in this tournament. And uh, this game will be one of the biggest of the season. All of FC Lati fans are sure to be watching in the high expectation. Is that making you at all anxious? Um, I wouldn't be human if that was the case. You know, obviously, I'm going to feel it. But I wouldn't say this is the biggest game of the season. Of course, we've got the Europa League coming up a bit later on in the year. We've got the league to try and battle and win for. We've got, um, of course, the other cup we can still try and go and win. So we're looking to try and, and do what we can in this season, you know. And it's a, you know, I mentioned briefly, I believe, and I'm going to say anyway, in the previous episode, that, um, you know, we, we want to try and win this league. We want to try and do what we can. We want to try and win everything. I feel the squad's good enough. Last year, it was all about gelling the squad. So many influx of signings, new manager, new tactic, new players. It was it was a lot going on at the club. This year now, it looks it's more stable, more stability. And now we're looking to try and do even more damage. As Taylor misses a very good opportunity early on in the game, 19 minutes in, with a very good chance to try and take give us the lead. And the corner is not as good and is not unable to present as good as an opportunity to try and score. So, yeah, hopefully, first bit of silverware. You know, it's been a long time in this save since I've won anything. And um, especially after disappointing, well, I'd say disappointing. I wasn't particularly happy with the time at Home United. Uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a bit, I was sad that my time at Wuhan was cut short. I really wanted to achieve something there. And it's nice now to be at FC Lati and being able to, you know, able to win something or contending to win things yet again. And I actually enjoy the football we play here and I enjoy managing this team. Something I couldn't say about Home United. You know, I was trying to win leagues with Home United, trying to win cups, but I just wasn't enjoying the time, wasn't enjoying the squad. This squad, I am enjoying and I think it's a very good team. And obviously it's the best team I've managed at, through the whole stage of this career so far. Stockton playing the ball to Ammo. Come on. Ammo on that right-hand side. Plays it in to Stockton. And Stockton gives us the goal. Gets in there. We take the lead in the cup final. Apparently, there is a suspicion of offside. They can stick that up their asses because we've got the goal. And it's going to stand. And is there even a suspicion of offside? No way is there a suspicion of offside. That defender there. The, there was that one defender playing everyone onside. If, I mean, if he'd have pushed forward with the rest of his defense, Stockton would have been offside. And maybe we'll get another goal straight away from kickoff as Allen to Ammo. Ammo. Oh, it's been blocked. Brilliant block by the defender. The Shibo, whatever his name is. Uh, trying to... Tishobla. Uh, yeah, Tishoblo. Whatever his name was. Trying to get the goal. And unable to. So, Lewis, I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, no, 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 no. We do not need that. We do not need that. Calmly. Um, lots to come for you. I know you have what it takes. Shit, 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 shit. It seems confused. Oh no, I've made it worse. <laughs> God no. Team talks are so important. Fuck you, assistant manager Lewis. You're not doing another one again in an important game. Oh no. Twenty minutes left in the thirty minutes left in the match and they get their equalizer. Jaro with their second shot on target in their game, only their fourth shot of the entire match, their first click opportunity, and they find the back of the net. Ah, oh, Jero with a lifeline. Now I'm going to do another team talk. Just calmly encourage the lads. Let's see what we can do. Taylor to Gallon. Back to Taylor. 
Taylor playing it into Stockton and it's a decent header, decent attempt, but Ost is there to save it. Not a particularly good clearance away, but actually a really good ball over the top. And he's through on goal and oh, Jaro almost take a surprise lead in this tie. Here is Allen playing it out wide to McLaughlin. McLaughlin, sorry. No, I keep, oh, I'm saying that right, aren't I, McLaughlin? Either way. <laughs> yeah, McLaughlin, yeah. I'm saying it right. I don't know why I even doubted myself. All right, so we're going to make a substitution. It's going to be in the center of the pitch. What we're going to do... Ah, uh, shit. I, actually... We're going to go on the advanced tactic to do this. Just because with the injuries to all our midfielders... Uh, what I think I will do is I will drop Jamie Allen back. And we'll bring on Youngster, who actually came for our youth system. Vesa Neuland. Now, he's not very good. Actually, I don't know. See, looking at that, I'm, actually, I'm, I'd rather not. I might put you further forward. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put William uh, Lindquist-Vist... I'm going to push him forward, and we're going to take you off. Not having a good game. Let's go. McLaughlin looking frustrated and stuff. Fitness is sort of catching up for him. Now, we can make as many subs as we want in... Well, actually, I think, yeah, I think we can make as many subs as we want in this tournament, unless there's a limit. What's my keeper doing? Oh, my God. I don't know if you saw that, but my keeper was just all over the place. Go back and rewind it if you didn't see it. But he was he was doing something, and oh, my God. We're lucky to survive that. Jaro have definitely come out and played a lot better in this match. And I'm going to assertively demand more from the team. Now, that can backfire on you when you demand more. But they go on the attack deep in their half from a throw in. Taylor to Gallon to Stockton to McLaughlin. Bang! 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 The right back's first ever goal of the, of the season. Getting us a 2-1 scoreline, Stockton playing it to the right back, who's very far, pushed very far forward in the box, actually in the striker role, and he buries it in the back of the net, now, gonna go containing, gonna play with a much lower tempo, waste time, play even safer, retain possession, blah blah blah, get stuck in, close that more, do that, structured, go into advanced tactics, gonna drop you back to there, drop you to back to there, looks actually make some substitutions, Take Stockton off. We'll bring Carrison on. You know, just to sort of waste a little bit of time. We'll make one substitution. And now, with just seconds remaining in the tie, we have to hold on. Carrison, trying to find ammo, gives the ball away. There's still 20 seconds left in the match. Still could get a late goal. I wouldn't pull it past him. It only takes a second to score. But they're currently not having the ball. They don't have the ball. They only few seconds remain. Come on, ref. Blow the full-time whistle. Blow the full-time whistle, ref. And there we go. We have won the cup. Get in there, my son. Only our second ever trophy in this career. But my God, I enjoyed it. Probably more than the first one. Because at least we, I feel like we deserved this one. A home United one, we sort of stole it in that final game. But this one, we had to fight for it. We won two penalty shootouts. And in the end, we won the actual final itself. So, we win the Liga Cup. And uh, I've got, of course, a massive high. Um, of course, we're big favourites of the competition, but I'm I'm delighted with it. It's brilliant. I'm thoroughly delighted. I'm actually delighted with a magnificent achievement. I just got as capable of going on and being a real force, and I think so is too. So, my name is on the lips of them. What did the board say about that? I don't actually know. Actually, there you go. The board. The board are pleased with the win. Uh, it was not regarded as a priority, but of course, to still win it, it's still a good feeling. You know, it's like winning the League Cup. Many people don't look at it as a good competition, but it's still a competition. It's still one you could win. We were named biggest overachievers, just like we were in the league last year. So that's good. And now we can actually turn our attention to the league. We can turn our attention to the league, to the Sumomen. Sumon, Sumomen, I believe it is actually. Yeah, Sumomen Cup. We can turn our attention to that. And we can look to try and win it. As you can see, the board expectation from me is to actually win the league. And the reason for that is because I asked for it. I said, look, give me an extra, I think it was like an extra few hundred pound a week. I want to win the league. I would like I would like this to be my last year with FC Lati. Not because I'm not enjoying it. You know, I've spoken about a lot, however, I'm enjoying my time here. But if I can, I'd like to win everything this year and move on. You know, leave them wanting more. So that's what I'm doing. I've won the League of Cup. Now it's on. Now it's about turning our attention to the actual league itself, 
and also trying to battle on two fronts. I mean, Europa League, when it comes apart, when it comes along, that will be fun when it lasts. But it's not priority number one. It's not priority number two. It's priority number three. It's going to be, I'm not, uh, if anything, I might play a weaker team in Europa League. Get knocked out a little bit early. I don't actually know what my minimum expectations are for that because they've not counted it on here. But I'll, I'll probably just reach that minimum expectation and get knocked out because it's not my, my it's not my main priority. So, um, let's have a look at the, let's have a look at the, the leaderboard. Not leaderboard, sorry, the Hall of Fame. I did, said the wrong thing. Where are we? There we are. We're in, <laughs> we are now on, not on there, but we've now got 21 points. As you can see, the two things we've won, we won the Les S League and the Liga Cup. Uh, five years apart from each other. So it's been a while since we've managed to get a competition, but hopefully, you know, we can win a few more here and then move on to a new team where we can start winning a few more things. Uh, how are we doing in terms of the continent? Of course, it's the first time we'll count in the European continent. Only one team, one domestic cup, and it picked us up 10 points as a nation. We'd, have to, we'd actually have to do quite a bit as a nation to make our mark on Finnish football and Keith Armstrong. I actually don't know who, who is Keith Armstrong. Oh, he's a director of football. I didn't actually know who this guy was. Had a pretty pretty good time in Finland by the looks of it, you know. And, uh, managed HJK as well. He's obviously had quite a big impact on um, on Finnish history, like I said. But yeah, we're not looking to do that. We're not looking to make that big of an impact. In fact, if we win the league, because by the looks of it, you win, you need two league titles. And a cup, and you can get a decent amount of points. Clearly, this cup competition isn't seen as a great cup competition. So you barely get any points from it. But by the looks of, you know, from this guy who's won it in recent times, as you can see, with Jaro, if you can win the other two cup competitions, then you can actually do, you can actually make your mark and actually gain quite a few points, which, of course, would be great. Now, as a Englishman, again, we're still pretty far off there. Uh, <laughs> nowhere near... Um, the top yet, but still it's it's nice just to get another cup. You know, that's the main thing So next time I'll meet you back will be in 11 games time like I did last year So one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven. So it'll probably be here Just after the FC Haka match and Yeah, you know, hopefully we'll get a good run of form. Of course. There are some big games Obviously there are gonna be some big games. We play pretty much every team here but the HJK came. The HJK game for me in particular is going to be an interesting one. Um, I didn't actually talk about where we predicted to come. According to season preview, we're actually predicted to finish second. And as you can see, it's very tight actually. The odds between us, HJK, and Jaro. So you know, according to that, it could go either way between the three. So by beating Jaro there and actually looking pretty convincing when we did it, I'm excited to see what we do in the league. So clearly, these three matches here will be. Uh, uh, Will be quite important because they're in a short space of time and they've two tough teams in there. Uh, I'll still look forward to playing NYPA because they are still to me a decent team in this league. Even though we beat them, you know we've beaten them twice so far this season or once so far this season and not lost them twice. I still consider them to be up there. I still expect them to do quite well. So I think it's going to be it for now, guys. Um, I don't think there's anything else I particularly talk about. Just have a look at my profile. As you can see, I'm trying to earn coaching badges, but still, uh, money at the club is tight. So that's uh, they, they're not really willing to give me a coaching badge so far. But my stats are still growing and things, so that's all. I'm I'm fine with it. But yeah, just be for now, guys. So until next time, peace out.